Lego Worlds is an incredible game. It's like having an endless bucket of Legos. You can build a huge castle or a small house in the clouds. Learn how to design and create your own world with me in this tutorial series. Become a master designer slash builder. In this series, you'll learn how to design and build many different architectural styles. We'll cover lighting, furnishing, and decorating interior and exterior spaces. We'll build castles, dungeons, bridges, skyscrapers, and even a spaceship. So get your game ready and follow along. Hey guys, welcome back to Designing and Building in LEGO Worlds. If you watched the previous episode, we talked about the various biomes in LEGO Worlds and some of the cool things that you can build in them. So in this episode, we're going to get started building. It's pretty exciting, right Max? For our first building, we are going to build a beach house right here on the beach. <laughs> now before you start building, you need to think about your design. Since this is a beach house, we're going to want it to have a covered deck, large windows so you can see the ocean really well, bright colors, lounge chairs, it'll be raised above the ground just in case it floods, and then we'll have a guest bedroom. If you need a little inspiration, you can find some on Pinterest, Google Image Search, or ideas.lego.com. We've chosen this beach house as inspiration. Just like in real life, you're going to want to start with a floor plan. The floor plan is what you see if you're looking straight down at a building's floor. Think of it as your base plate. A lot of LEGO houses in LEGO worlds are pretty small, and that's okay, but it does make them a little bit harder to decorate. Be sure to design your floor plan so that it's large enough to fit all of your furniture. Sometimes it helps to sketch out your floor plan before starting. Now you don't have to do this, and sometimes it's fun just to take out the Legos and start building. Alright Max, you ready to get started building? <laughs> Looks like Max is ready. Alright, first thing we want to do is get the free build tool going. Now we're going to go to bricks and colors, and we're going to start with base plates. For our beach house, we're going to use the 16 by 16 plate. The next thing you want to do is select your color. You can always change the color later, but it is nice to get started building in the color that you like. All of the trim for the beach house will be white. Okay, so let's unpin this so we can see more of the screen. Now, let's decide where to put our first base plate. Sometimes it helps to rotate the camera so you can see the top view. Now, our beach house is going to extend over the water, so we're going to place the first plate here. But we don't want to place the plate directly on the water, so if you look over to the right, we can move the brick up and down with the right shift or right control. Now those buttons will be different if you're playing on a console. Alright Max, let's place the first block. And there it is. Just the right height. So now we're going to place several more and create the floor base plate. Now before we place our next brick, we have to bring the brick back down. In this case, we're using the right control button. When you're placing a brick next to another one, I've noticed that it's much easier if you move along the underside like this and then move upwards to the bottom side of the edge, then it clicks into place easily, just like that. Trying just to move to the edge doesn't seem to work quite as well, because the brick wants to sit on top. But if you start from underneath, just like this, go over here and then go up to the edge, it clicks right in place. Good job, Max. All right, let's keep building out this base plate. Now, if you're trying to place a brick and you get stuck like this and you can't place it next to it, just move the brick completely off the structure like this and then slowly go back. And then once you reach the edge with your mouse cursor, you should be able to lock it back in place. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Once you get the controls down, you can build pretty quickly. If you're having trouble getting the brick to place, then you may want to rotate your view or zoom in. And we've run into a little problem here. The terrain is a little bit higher than the floor, so we're going to have to clear some of this away. You can do this by using the right mouse button. 
Or you can also use the landscape tool and subtract some of the terrain. All right, Max, we want to make this level a little bit thicker, so we're going to add some 8x16 bricks onto the top. To place these quickly, you can click, hold the shift key, and drag along the axis. All right, now that we have our base built, we're going to put some columns in so it doesn't look like it's floating. For the columns, we're going to use the 2x2 two two bricks. Be sure to adjust your view so that you can see the entire area that you want to build in. If we were to try and place the column here and drag downwards without being able to see the ground, it wouldn't work properly. You may have to zoom out. Be sure that you can see both the surface where you're going to start building and then the ground where it will stop. Be sure that you set your axis lock to either Y and Z or X and Y. Now we click, hold the shift key, and drag downwards. As soon as we see the bricks intersecting the ground, we can stop dragging. We're going to create a new column in the middle of each base plate. Notice that when we try to place over here, we're having difficulties and we can't really zoom in or out. The best way to solve this problem is to change position. We're going to have Max walk over here. Building in LEGO Worlds is much easier from the ground up. You can always go back and add details later, but it's better to get as much done as possible from the ground up. We want to add a slight overhang to this platform, and it's better to get it done now before we've built the rest of the building. Your axis lock will keep changing on you while you build, so be sure to change it as necessary. Sometimes it won't work quite right, and that's okay. Just press the Z key to undo. They say that life is in the details, and I think that's true. It's little details like this overhanging ledge that will make your building look more interesting. Good job, Max. You are doing great. Okay, now we are going to lay out the perimeters of the outside walls. Now, if you want to be able to use the doors and windows that are included in LEGO Worlds, you need to use the brick that is one stud deep. If you try to use the bricks that are two studs deep, you won't be able to place doors and windows on those blocks. Okay, now we are going to start laying out the walls. So we're going to start with the edge. We're going to place one block right here. This area is going to be the back patio. And then we're also going to leave space in the front for a front patio. The main part of the house is going to be gray. So we're going to change the color before we start building. And just like before, be sure your axis is correct and then click, hold the shift key and drag. You can press the R key to rotate the brick. In between switching bricks, you can simply use the pick mode and get back to the brick you were just using. Now that we've laid out the exterior of the walls, let's lay out the interior. First look at your floor plan from above. This part is going to be the living room and dining room, and the back part will be the bedrooms. Let's create a dividing wall between the bedrooms and the living room and kitchen area. Next we'll create a dividing wall between the bedrooms. We're going to make the guest bedroom a little bit smaller than the master bedroom. 
Now that we've placed the interior and the exterior walls, this is a perfect time to do the floor. It's going to be much harder to get to the floor once we build the walls all the way up. Since this is a beach house, we're going to go with tiled floors. We've chosen the long 1x8 flat tile in the light stone gray color. Before we place a floor on the outside, we're going to want to put some pillars down. If we tried to put a floor first, then our pillars would be at a different height from the rest of the building. And we want to keep everything the same height. So let's place some pillars. We're going to click, hold the shift key, and drag upwards. We want our windows to fit on the walls, so we're going to make our house just a little bit taller than the windows. For this project, we're going to use the tall town hall window. I like how tall it is, and it also looks like it could be kind of beachy. This should be about the perfect height because we're going to place our windows right about here on this level. Now let's place our next pillar. Notice how there's a shadow underneath what we're placing. That helps us make sure we're placing it in the right spot. When you're trying to match the height, sometimes it helps to rotate so that you can see the front and make sure that they are all lined up. Now we don't want any of them to fall off into the water, so we're going to place some 1x4x2 fence bricks. This will create a railing. Now if we try to just place these, we're going to end up with an uneven number. And we'll have an annoying gap right there. A good way to get around this is to turn on the overlap tool and then click and drag. Notice that it goes right through these blocks. Now we've run into a little issue here. We can't place another railing here without ruining the walls. And we can't move in the other direction because then it cuts a chunk out of our pillar. So instead, we're going to build a little piece of wall right here. Now I think Lego studs look pretty awesome, but we want this house to look really finished. So we're going to put cap pieces to hide all of the studs on the rail. The easiest way to do this is with the 1x1 flat tile. We're going to click, hold shift, and drag. Now we're going to use the same 1x1 one one plate to cover the studs along the outside. Max says he loves the way the house is coming along, but he had a really cool idea. He thinks we should put some drains along here just in case we get a big rainstorm. So we're going to right click and remove each of these blocks. We're going to use the 1x2 radiator grill, but because it won't fit perfectly in here, we need to make sure our overlap tool is turned on. We're going to click, hold shift, and drag. This gives our beach house a really cool added detail. Max likes the way these radiator grills look so much that now he wants to use them on the deck. We're going to pick the same light stone gray color as the flooring on the inside of the house. Good idea, Max. This looks really cool. We're going to mirror the same thing that we built up here on the back of the house. Now you can use the copy tool if you want, but I find it's a little easier when you're doing something small to just do it brick by brick.
Max, you are doing a great job. Now that we have the outline of the walls done, we can go ahead and place some doors. The best option for this project is the cafe door because it has a lot of glass and it has a white outline. Now we need to place doors in each of the bedrooms. So first we're going to right click and we're going to remove the brick where we're going to place the door. Now before you place the door, look at the white outline. That is where the door will swing. It's usually best to have the door swing outwards. Now that we've placed the doors, we're going to build up the walls a little bit and place the windows. For the windows, we're going to use the tall town hall window. And we're going to place three side by side because we want to take advantage of these beautiful ocean views. Alright Max, this beach house is going to have a lot of windows. Nothing wrong with that though. <laughs> now that we have the windows built, we're going to fill in the spaces in the walls. This beach house is looking pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, why don't we go into first person and see what it looks like from Max's point of view. Look at this view, seriously. What a beautiful sunset. Oh my gosh, wow. Giant windows are perfect for the beach. All right, now that we have the walls finished, we're going to start on the roof. For this, we're going to use the eight by 16 plate. You can use larger plates if you want, that's just the one I've chosen. We want the plate to overhang the walls by one stud. Just like that. To make the roof a little more interesting, we're going to add a level of 2x4 bricks. Now we're going to add 1x1 one one plates to the edge. Now we're going to do another layer of the 8x16 brick. This will give us a cool little notch right here in the roof. Now we're going to put a finished edge on top of the roof. All right, Max, the house is looking pretty awesome. But you know what? I think it needs a second floor. What do you think, Max? Think that's a good idea? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to start building a second floor onto the beach house. Ooh. 
All right, Max, why don't we put a double door in the top level? I can't put a single door exactly in the middle, and that kind of bothers me. I want it to be symmetrical. So we're going to put a double door to solve that problem. Now we're going to build up our walls a little bit, and then we'll place our windows. You're going to run into a few issues like this. For example, this window will not let me place it when it's rotated this way. So I have to rotate it the other way to place it. The only drawback is now these windows are facing different directions. But that's okay. Since we can't fit two sets of windows in the front, we're going to place one set and then we're going to build a glass wall. Now I don't want the studs showing underneath the glass wall, so I'm going to place some one by one plates. Now we'll place two levels of clear one by one plates. I've noticed that sometimes the blocks are totally clear and other times they have lines in them. This seems to be unavoidable and it doesn't look too bad. Alright, now we're going to fill in the corners. Before we put the roof on, we're going to want to go ahead and do the floor. It'll be a lot easier to do the floor before the roof goes on. Outside, we're going to create a rooftop deck, just like the decking we have down here. Okay, Max, I think the second story is ready for its roof. We're going to create a similar roof to the first level. Max thinks the beach house would look really cool with a butterfly roof instead of a traditional gabled roof, and I agree. A butterfly roof is basically an inverted, regular, gabled roof. So instead of going down on the outsides, it goes down towards the middle. To do this, we're going to use the 2x4 slope, and we're going to place them facing each other. We're going to keep adding layers to the slope until we reach the outside edge. Now our roof turned out to be a little bit too steep. It's not proportional to the rest of the house. So instead, we're going to try using the 3x4 slope. Now we'll create some columns to hold up the edges of the roof. Now we'll cover all the studs up here with the one by one plate. 
You don't really need to do this because no one's really gonna see it unless they're flying above the house, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Now we're going to put some gray 1x1 one one plates along the edges. Alright guys, Max is getting pretty tired and we've done a lot in this episode. In the next episode we're going to decorate the interior and the exterior and we're going to add some stairs. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed the episode please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of these episodes then go ahead and subscribe. If you have any ideas for things you want to see built then please leave them in the comments section. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!